Today I'm going to be doing some more work on the minivan, so to start off I need to run to the tire store. Well first of all I need to take this tire off right here, this uh, passenger front. It does have a small leak and over a couple days it will be completely flat. So I need to get this thing jacked up and pull that guy off. Probably need to pull it forward first so I can make myself some room. And some other things I would like to get done today. Here we have a relay for the fuel pump. So I want to get that guy installed so we can get some more fuel pressure hopefully and we'll be able to turn the minivan back up. And uh, we also have a fuel pressure gauge right here so we can monitor the fuel pressure. Uh, that's pretty important. I need to get one of those for the hatch as well. But uh, we also might need to do a fuel pressure regulator, an adjustable one. I might be picking up one of those today as well. But for now I would like to see if just doing the relay will be enough to bump up the fuel pressure. Uh, even with the stock fuel pressure regulator, but I am going to go pick up another one hopefully later today anyway, so we should be alright on fuel, hopefully enough to make over 700 horsepower, but we'll see. I also picked up some more oil for the minivan, so it's been pretty due for an oil change for quite some time now, so going to get that all done as well. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to start with taking off that tire and running it over to uh, the tire shop and hopefully getting that flat fixed. Looks like there's a small nail in the tire, so I just got to bring this in and they'll pull that guy out and get her patched up. You got smarts. <laughs> Why is that smart? <laughs> I'm just dumb enough to stand outside in the cold and watch it. So there's a reason Dan's truck's over there, not mine. No, dude, I was literally just looking outside, like right after it happened, because I seen this dude go by on a four wheeler and I was watching him. And then right when I looked away, your Brent's like, "Yo, what happened?" And then he like saw him <laughs> slide into the ditch over there. There he goes. <laughs> I would just yank him around just to do it, right? <laughs> just be like, like that one video where like, like yeah, pulling, the two pulling the Dodger around. Each other the, yeah. Them. All right, so I got the tire dropped off for the minivan. That should be done shortly so I can throw that back on. And uh, I also stopped by PFI and I was talking to Brent and I also picked up a couple things. So I got some Dash 10 aluminum uh, weld on bungs for the valve cover because I need to do a catch can on the minivan as well. And I also picked up a filter because I might make my own catch can for it as well. Kind of like how I did on the hatch a while back just with some three inch intercooler piping. Or if I don't have enough time, I'm just gonna borrow the one off the hatch and put it on the minivan because it will go in the exact same spot that I need it. And I can just uh, put the bungs on this valve cover and the minivan will be ready to go for now since we are kind of short on time. But we'll see, I might uh, make another catch can for it since I do have that filter. The catch can isn't my number one priority for right now, so I'm gonna wait on that. I can knock that out pretty quick and easy. I might do it later today or sometime tomorrow. Uh, for right now, I wanna focus my time on getting the uh, relay in for the fuel pump so we can get some more voltage going to it and we can turn our boost back up. So I have this relay kit for a fuel pump right here. Uh, this was actually sent to us by another Kyle and he is from Ron Francis Wiring. So thank you Kyle very much. He sent us this uh, relay right here with all the wiring. This is 10 gauge wiring and it's a 30 amp relay. And he sent this to us specifically just for the minivan. So thank you so much. We're definitely gonna get this installed right now. And uh, I also went to O'Reilly's, picked up some better crimpers because the ones I have suck. And I also picked up some of these little spade connectors. I'll show you why we need these just in a second. But uh, yeah, gonna get to installing this relay real quick so we can have more voltage going to that pump and hopefully We'll be able to turn our boost up. All right, so I'm in the back of the van right now. I have the seats rolled forward and the carpet is pulled up over them so we can uh, have some access to our fuel pump right here. Also, this piece of sheet metal covers that so we have that bent out of the way. And uh, yeah, I already have it unplugged. This is the factory plug that goes to the top of it right here. It just has a power and ground in there to uh, feed the fuel pump and that is unplugged for right now. We don't have to take the fuel pump out to do this, so when we put that 450 in there, uh, it came with a plug and two of its own wires that are already ran inside when we did the fuel pump, so those should be good. We don't need to upgrade those or anything. We can just uh, do the new relay from right up here without having to take the fuel pump out, which is nice. So how this is gonna work is this is the relay right here. I'm gonna try to explain how we're gonna do this real quick. So 
how this relay is triggered is this orange wire, I guess you could say is the positive, and then this thin black wire is the negative. So when this is grounded and this has power, the relay will click and it will allow um, voltage to pass through the red wire right here and this blue wire, these two thick wires. So when these two are activated, it completes this circuit and lets these uh, you know, flow together. So this right here, this thick red wire is going to go to the battery, straight to the battery, and then this blue wire right here is going to go on to the positive terminal on the top of this guy. So that's why I got, uh, I don't know if they're in here right now, but that's why I got some spade connectors because this plug right here has little spades inside and I'm just gonna crimp a new spade onto the end of this red wire and then slide that guy on the positive for the fuel pump and then for the ground I'll just make another one and then just have it ground probably just you know somewhere on the chassis just some good body ground and then that will be uh, all set to go there and then we are going to use the existing plug right here we're actually probably going to cut this off and we're going to need the power wire off of this one we don't need the ground off of this but we do need the power wire and then that positive is going to go to this uh, orange wire right here and then this other black will go to the same ground that we ground the fuel pump to with another thick wire so when you turn on the key and it tries to send power into the fuel pump instead of sending it to the pump it's going to send power to the relay which will activate the relay and in turn will allow power to flow from the battery straight into the pump which will power it on so that's pretty much how it's going to work hopefully uh, that makes sense uh, if not, I'm still going to kind of show it when it's all said and done. But for right now, I'm going to start by uh, getting all these wires ran. This is probably the hardest part is, you know, just getting these ran up to the battery. And I'm going to have to hide them under the trim pieces because I don't just want them laying around. So I think I'm going to work on that for right now. Make sure I have enough uh, wire to reach to the front of the car. And then we'll start wiring everything in from there. It should be pretty straightforward. So it's not too bad. And then I'll just have to find a place to hide the relay when I'm done. It looks like it should fit nicely like under here or something like that. You know, just hide it out of the way so when people get in the back they're not stepping on it or something and it doesn't mess up our connection. And then I also want to make sure that the spade connectors fit on here tight because we don't want those slipping off by accident because that could be bad. But uh, yeah, going to make sure it has enough wire first and then I'll start uh, getting everything wired up. All right guys, so this is where I'm at so far. Um, I wasn't able to run the relay all the way next to the fuel pump just because the wires that this came with were just barely too short, but I did find a good spot for it. So I'm just gonna mount it right here to the bottom of the seat, just like that, probably with a self-tapping screw. There's this little mounting thing right here. Uh, if I pull the relay off, that'll be really easy just to mount it right there. And I left enough slack on these wires so that when I fold up the seat, it will just be right there without snagging on the wires or anything. And it'll be a nice access to the relay and the fuse in case something goes wrong. All I got to do is flip up the seat and it'll be right there. So uh, when the seat folds down, there's this little peg right here that kind of folds out. And uh, it has about two, three inches, I'd say, of clearance underneath the seat completely. So you don't have to worry about the fuel pump getting crushed or anything like that. Unless I had something under the seat and I closed it down, that could be an issue. But as long as I'm not putting anything big under the seat, uh, we shouldn't have a problem with that. So I'll make sure I'm careful with this. It will be good under the seat and it's a nice easy way to get to it. So that's gonna be right there. And I punched a hole through the carpet to run the wires through and underneath the carpet, I have everything uh, temporarily hooked together. Like I said, I just have these twisted together. I already have it connected to the battery up front. I'll actually show you guys real quick. I was also in the process of running the wires as well. So on this side, I have the blue wire coming through the carpet and then I have it coming right here through this little foot panel. And then I popped this thing loose, ran it under that. I still just have to put the plastic uh, back over to hide that guy and it will be hidden. And then same thing for the front. Blue wire comes right through here. And I just got to cover it up. And then that will just, uh, I still have to clean this up some more. But then that runs through this little hole on the firewall. And then that wire goes right through here to the battery. Just like that. So that's just resting in there to test it. So I'm going to do that real quick. Make sure everything works. And then once I make sure it's working how it should, I'm going to get everything finished up, get it all legit, and the fuel pump will be ready to go. So now I'm just gonna test and make sure that the pump does come on, make sure everything's working before I finish all my connections. And it is coming on. 
Not sure if you guys can hear that. Let me do it one more time. I'll aim it back here. You can also hear the relay going, so that's good. It's clicking right over here. So that's all ready to go. Now I just have to uh, get everything finished up, make all the connections solid, and put the little plastic pieces back on and get that wire tucked away and the fuel pump will be uh, all set to go and then I also have to get that relay mounted under the seat and hopefully she will be making some more fuel pressure. So after I get that relay done, get uh, all the wiring buttoned up, get everything finalized and everything is tucked out of the way nicely, I'm gonna start uh, installing the fuel pressure gauge. But before I can do that, I need to run over to the tire store and pick up the flat that I dropped off earlier before they close because I kind of need that for tonight. So I'm gonna run over there real quick, pick that up, and then when I get back, I'm going to finish up that relay and then I'll start installing the fuel pressure gauge. All right, so I just got the tire, it's all ready to go. Uh, should be holding air just fine now. They got the nail pulled out of there and got her all patched up. Just need to be bolted back on. And I also got the relay all the way done. So I wanted to show you guys real quick how much room there is. Uh, kind of hard to see, but I don't know what the door is doing right there. It's like creaking. But uh, yeah, what the heck? Stop. Stay. All right, so there's plenty of room under there. And uh, it's not going to get crushed or anything like that as long as nobody tries to put anything under the seat. So I'll just make sure that uh, no one does that, hopefully. And if you flip the seat back up, it's right there. Easy access. Got it bolted to the back of the seat. I already got the carpet put back in. And something else that was pretty cool is right where I happened to punch that hole through the carpet for the wires. I didn't even know this when I did that. But there was a hole right here with a plug in it. And I was able to take that out and then run the wires all the way under to the pump in the back. So that worked out pretty nice. And uh, yeah, that's all ready to go. Just got to put this plastic piece back on and the one in the front. And the relay is done. Got the wires going to the fuel pump. And I'm not sure if it's just me or not, but when I went to go test it, it honestly does sound like the fuel pump is quite a bit louder. That might have just been because the seats were folded up and I could hear it better. But I feel like the fuel pump is definitely getting some more voltage. So hopefully that's the case and we can get some more fuel out of her so we can turn this thing up. Now that the relay is done, I'm going to be installing this fuel pressure gauge. This one right here is a glow shift. It was like 80 bucks for the complete kit. I really need to get one of these for the hatch as well, but uh, I'm gonna be putting this one on the minivan, and uh, it's just really nice to have a fuel pressure gauge, especially if you're having any sort of fuel issues because having a gauge will help pinpoint uh, what the issue could be, and it's also nice to know what your fuel pressure is at at all times, so I'd say it's a pretty important gauge. This is gonna be pretty quick and easy to install, so uh, not really gonna go over the whole installation, but all you have to do is just give this little harness right here power and ground, and then that will run into the uh, gauge right here. Then you will plug this one into the back of the gauge as well, and then this harness runs out to the sensor itself, and then this sensor will just thread into an already tapped hole on my fuel rail. I have an aftermarket fuel rail, so it already has a spot for this. Uh, probably won't have one on a stock fuel rail, but then it's as easy as that, get it all wired in, and everything ran, and the gauge will be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, installed real quick, and uh, yeah, then we'll be on our way. All right, so I'm gonna wait on installing that fuel pressure gauge for tonight. I'm just gonna wait until we go to PFI tomorrow because uh, he has some better tools to take the fuel rail off because I have to take it off to get this thing working. So this is a video I just took, and right there is the fuel rail. That's the hole I was talking about. And I thought there was just a little plug in there, like with an Allen head or something, but uh, there's not. It just goes all the way through and it's completely blocked off. So in order to make that work, you actually have to drill it out. So it's like an optional little hole and to use it, you have to drill that all the way through and then you'll be able to use that as, you know, fuel pressure gauge or whatever you need it for. But uh, in order to do that, I have to take the fuel rail off so I don't get any metal shavings in there and all I have to take the fuel rail off is just normal Allen wrenches and this thing takes uh, like little Allen screws but they're a real pain to get to with only Allen wrenches and it would literally take me probably at least 20 minutes just to get the fuel rail off right now and then another 20 to put it back on but Brent has like these little swivel Allens that get in there really nice with a ratchet and it'll make it a lot faster so I'm just gonna wait to do that until tomorrow but uh, yeah so there's still some more things that we need to get done. I need to put that tire back on, but I think I'm gonna be done for tonight. Um, we are really shooting close to this deadline. So in order to make it to the YouTuber call out thing, we're gonna to have to leave uh, sometime on Wednesday, which is two days away. Tomorrow's Tuesday, and then we have to leave on Wednesday. 
So we almost have hardly any time. And I still need to do a catch can. We need to get it retuned. I'm gonna go get an alignment on it. And I'm pretty sure I have some tires figured out. We're just gonna run some radials on it. Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to run any sort of different suspension because we just did not have enough notice unless we like next day aired something and I was looking at stuff online. So unless by some miracle we found some in the next couple days, we could do that, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So we're probably just gonna mob the minivan out there on stock suspension, see what it does. I'm gonna go easy on it if it's you know kind of sketchy because it is a half mile and it might be going pretty fast. And if it feels any kind of sketch, I'm not gonna risk you know going crazy fast in it just to prove a point. I mean, if it goes quick and we make it out there and it holds together, that's all I'm trying to do. But I think it'll be a good opportunity to make it out there. So we'll see. But on that note, um, I'm still not for sure about the tires. I have some options. Um, uh, there's actually, if you guys remember Ricky, he had that blue EG hatch and he made like 680 or something like that on stock sleeves. I had a video of him a while back. He actually lives in Florida and he said I could borrow his radials and they'll fit on these wheels but his are pretty used up and I would like to make sure they fit before I take the car all the way down there and we have uh, some issues. So, I mean, if any of you guys are local or any of you guys are on the way from Colorado to Florida, like within that route, let me know if you happen to have any radials that you would sell or let me borrow by any chance. Um, I'm only asking because we're on such a short uh, time frame right here. We only have a couple days. I'm starting class tomorrow as well, so I'm gonna have to get out of class early, try to get everything done on this. And uh, yeah, so we're pushing it real close here, but I really wanna try to make it out there if we can. I wanna do it for you guys, and I just think it'll be a good experience. So uh, yeah. And as far as getting down there, I'm probably just gonna be borrowing my mom's Pathfinder. She has a Nissan Pathfinder. Uh, it's like a newer model. It should have no problem towing the minivan. It already has a hitch on it. And uh, probably just gonna rent a U-Haul trailer, throw it on there and head out, see what happens. Uh, there's a chance Brent might be coming down as well. If he does come, he's gonna be flying out on probably Friday. So I know he really does wanna come with us. It just depends if he can fit it into his schedule. And uh, that would help me a lot too as well because when we bring the van down there, we're gonna have to retune it for altitude because the air is a lot denser down there. Like no matter what, it's gonna need to be retuned at least a little bit. But when we put it on the dyno tomorrow, that should give us a good like baseline. And then, you know, we can just turn the boost up and add fuel here and there like to compensate as far as I know. But if Brent's not able to make it down there, then I'm gonna bring my laptop and then hopefully we can at least talk over the phone and help, you know, get it all figured out, do some test runs and get it running right. There may be a chance Emilio's coming with us as well. Uh, Ricky is actually his brother, so he might tag along with us and that would make the road trip go by a lot faster and be a lot more fun. So we'll see about that, but as far as tonight, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to go to bed somewhat early so I can get up tomorrow, get a whole bunch of things done, and probably get quite a bit done when this is over at PFI. And uh, yeah, real quick update on Jeremy's Civic as well. We're kinda putting this one on hold. We literally have everything, and if we weren't putting all our time into the van right now, uh, his car, or at least his motor, would probably be back together. But we waited on this one, but his engine bay is all ready to go for any of you wondering. So, came out really nice, honestly. He also got this uh, K-member right here repainted in the back. He has the mounts in there just hanging. But the clear came out really nice. It's really glossy. So, this one's probably gonna look pretty good once we get it done. But that will be uh, once we get back, because he's gonna be coming with me as well to help film and whatnot. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can make it. Hopefully everything goes smooth. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say for tonight, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.